Human civilization has always known conflict, but it wasn't until the 20th century that the scope magnified to such a bloody scale as to engulf the entire world. In the aftermath of the war to end all wars, Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party fanned the flames of a broken and dispirited nation, rebuilding the country from the ashes of the Versailles Treaty into a fascist juggernaut that seemed unstoppable. They pushed all the way to the Atlantic in their blitzkrieg with England their next target. But Winston Churchill and his small island nation won the Battle of Britain, holding out through Hitler's terror bombing for an entire year. They stoked the fires of freedom long enough to stay alive and to save the world. After Pearl Harbor, the United States, with all its military and industrial muscle, entered the war. First Africa, then Italy, and then finally, Fortress Europe itself. You, soldier, are a part of this great crusade. Are you ready to rise above and beyond the call of duty? Good morning, Lieutenant. I'm Colonel Hargrove from the Office of Strategic Services. I'll get right to the point. The OSS was formed two years ago by presidential order to serve as the intelligence branch of the United States military. Our mission is anything and everything. Espionage, sabotage, subversion, search and rescue, you name it, we do it. Now, from time to time, we recruit people from outside of the regular ranks, especially if they've got a particular skill we need. Like you, Lieutenant Patterson. What you did last Monday got our attention. I know you consider yourself just another anonymous pilot in the transport corps, but taking out a half a dozen of the Wehrmacht and then sneaking back into friendly territory is quite an impressive feat of soldiering by anyone's measure. I had your records from basic and OCS pulled. Your instructors gave you high marks for weapons and munitions training. You were the top marksman in your class, excellent leadership skills, noted for being especially smart and resourceful. I also had your university transcript pulled. You were just one semester away from getting your aerospace engineering degree before you enlisted. You had earned straight A's from start to finish. In short, Lieutenant, you're just the kind of man we're looking for. But it's completely up to you whether you want to join us or not. Unfortunately, there's not much time to make a decision, so if the answer is yes, you'll be on a plane within the hour heading back to France. If it's no, you'll be ordered to forget we ever had this conversation. So, Lieutenant Patterson, what will it be? This operation is being planned as a success. We cannot afford to fail. With that declaration, the tone for D-Day was set. Allied troops were towed across the channel, seated inside gliders, whose pilots had only one chance for a successful landing. Thousands more traveled to France aboard Higgins boats, amphibious landing craft that were the key to the Allied triumph on D-Day. But the fight for Europe was just beginning, and not everything was going according to plan. Congratulations on your first mission. You've gotten a rather dramatic introduction to life in the OSS. I have every confidence you're going to make me look like a genius for recruiting you. Your new assignment is a dangerous one. We're sending you back into enemy territory, but this time you're going undercover as a Wehrmacht captain. Now, the Germans have carried over some bad habits from the last world war. One is a love for grossly oversized pieces of artillery. You may have heard of the railguns Dora and Gustav. Well, meet their new sister, Greta. It became fully operational last week. This is the only clear photo we've been able to get because they keep hiding the damn thing. They've spent the last seven days shooting it at the channel. This was a fuel tender, and this was a hospital ship. Greta's actually smaller than the door on the Gustav, but it's capable of firing a more powerful shell, and its reduced size gives it a high degree of mobility, so they're always able to move it before our bombers can get there. That's why we're sending you in to do it by hand. Your transport leaves at 1900 hours. Knock her out of commission, Lieutenant. Good luck.
Delivering explosive ordnance onto an enemy target has always been a major element of modern warfare. Artillery, tanks and bombers evolved into lethal extensions of the mighty German war machine. Goering's Luftwaffe, working in tandem with the Wehrmacht's mighty siege guns, smashed across Europe, the Channel and Britain herself. But tanks could be stopped, rail guns could be destroyed, and aeroplanes could be shot from the sky. Welcome back, Lieutenant. Unfortunately, you won't have much time to rest before you head out on your new mission. This time, your destination is inside Germany. We're sending you to the Daxmark submarine facility in Bremen, where they're building a new U-boat prototype that dwarfs anything we've seen before. Your job is to prevent this monstrosity from ever training its periscope on an Allied ship. Destroy it any way you can. We've arranged for your transport to Daxmark aboard a merchant marine freighter. You'll be going undercover again, this time as a Kriegsmarine officer. Now let me be clear, Patterson. There's no room for error. The timetable is extremely tight. Intelligence reports the sub will be launching for sea trials within the week. Get there as quickly as you can. The unseen terror is always the most frightening. And if you were aboard a ship in the icy North Atlantic during the war, you experienced firsthand the dread of wondering if you'd ever make it to port. From facilities like Daxmark, hundreds of German U-boats were launched to hunt in their deadly wolf packs. But the Allies fought back. Sub-hunting planes searched endlessly for U-boat periscopes, and when they found one, the results could be devastating. of which side you fought on, this would be a horrible way to die. This is the latest reconnaissance from the Siegfried Line. Now that Montgomery's attempt at a shortcut has failed, we're going to have to get through Germany the hard way. This is the Moselle River near Metz, and this is Fort Schmerzen, which is proving to be one tough nut to crack. Thick concrete walls, artillery, machine gun emplacements, dragon's teeth. It's a briar patch of German defences. Now what you see in the recon is only the tip of the iceberg. These forts go incredibly deep, sometimes four or five levels down into the earth. They're completely self-sustaining. They have their own command and control centres, radio rooms, supply bays, dormitories and kitchens. Jerry can stay down there for weeks, even months at a time. And of all these fortifications, Schmerzen is the biggest of the lot. While we've been able to knock out some of the smaller forts, Schmerzen has remained impenetrable. They keep pouring resources of men and equipment into it, even though it doesn't make much tactical sense now that we can effectively flank the position. Unless, that is, something sinister is going on down there that we don't know about. And that is what is scaring us. I'll be honest with you, son. You're not the first agent we've tried to send in there. But it's imperative that we find out what the Germans are up to, so that's why I've personally assigned you this mission. The Nazis are hiding something deep inside Fort Schmerzen, and my gut tells me it's something bad. Along with tanks and artillery, a key ingredient of the 1939 Blitzkrieg was the Stuka dive bomber. Its powerful cannons could rip through any piece of armor, and the Stuka's telltale whistle as it dove towards its target became as powerful a psychological weapon as any of its explosive bombs. Goering and Hitler's success with the Stuka, however, would be short-lived. The Allied air forces would soon gain superiority of the skies. I've got good news and bad news for you, Lieutenant. The good news is that your security clearance has been elevated. The bad news is that we're sending you to Norway in the middle of winter. This all has to do with Germany's attempt to build something called an atomic bomb. I'm no scientist, but if I understand the specs correctly, 
This weapon could instantly turn the tide of war in Germany's favor. From almost the first day they occupied Norway, the Germans took control of the Norsk hydro plant near the town of Ryuken in the Telemark region. Apparently this facility is capable of producing a substance that OSRD has designated heavy water, which is a key in making one of these bombs work. There have been some daring raids throughout the war on this plant, but apparently it has never been completely knocked out of commission. Last week, the Norwegian resistance reported that it was back up and running at full capacity. Your transport leaves at 0700 tomorrow. Arctic gear is waiting for you on board. Good luck, and try to stay warm. The Nazis poured countless man-hours and reich marks into their various secret weapons programs, especially in the area of jet propulsion. Here, the airframe of a Messerschmitt 163 undergoes a somewhat successful test. The 163 Comet was an amazing little fighter, though it was often more dangerous to the pilots who flew it than it was to enemy bombers. But despite its drawbacks, the jet age had begun. Welcome back, Patterson. I hope you've had a chance to warm up after your visit to the North Pole. <laughs> because time is of the essence for this next mission. We're sending you to the Steinberg salt mine, located just outside of the Austrian village of alt Ausey. The Third Reich has used the mine as its all-purpose safety deposit box, creating a vast cache of paintings and sculpture. The Nazis have had over six years to plunder the riches of Europe. They've looted art from personal collections and museums, stealing almost the entire cultural heritage of Western civilization. Now, I know I might not look it, but my college minor was art history, and it gives me grief to no end when I think about everything that's been lost in this war, all the art that's been destroyed in the never-ending artillery barrages and bombing raids. Two days ago, our intelligence intercepted a communique from the regional governor ordering the destruction of the Steinberg salt mine and all the artwork inside. The garrison's commander responded enthusiastically that the place would be wired with enough explosives to destroy not only the mine, but part of the adjoining town as well. Sadly, this situation is not without precedent. Last year, after the invasion, Hitler ordered the general in charge of Paris, on Dietrich von Cholitz, to burn the city lest it fall into Allied hands. For history's sake, Cholitz refused and declared Paris an open city, saving it from certain destruction. Unfortunately, what Cholitz did was an aberration in the way your typical German officer thinks. There's a jeep waiting for you outside, Lieutenant. Stop this madman from carrying out his orders. Dismissed. Following in the footsteps of the ME-163, the Messerschmitt 262 was the first true turbojet fighter aircraft. Capable of flying 100 miles per hour faster than a P-51 Mustang, the 262 streaked across the sky at more than half the speed of sound. It was an aircraft truly ahead of its time. The Germans hoped it would win back the air superiority they so desperately desired. But the 262 was not invincible, and it was too little, too late for the Luftwaffe. This war is going to end soon, and unfortunately so made the Grand Alliance that won it. Ike's going to let the Soviets into Berlin first, and once that happens, everything will change. The spoils of this war are not going to be land or riches, but scientific research. The Germans have a huge head start in jet propulsion and rocketry, technology that's going to change the world we live in. This mission that you begin today is why you were brought into the OSS. It's been in the planning stages since before D-Day, since before I even knew your name. Lieutenant, you're being sent back into Germany one last time, on a mission that just may determine the fate of the free world. 150 miles southwest of Berlin lies the Hartz Mountain Range. Buried deep inside it is the Nordhausen-Mittelwerk plant, 
where the Nazis have been building their rockets ever since the Pinamunda raid in 43. The facility is run by the SS and the toughest of the Waffen divisions are stationed there. The Germans consider the V2 program their last hope and they'll protect it at all costs. We need to learn everything the Germans know and bluntly, we can't let the Soviets find out. Your mission is to turn their own terror weapon against them, capture their research, analyze it the best you can, then use it to destroy the facility. I've been told that luck is when opportunity meets preparedness. If that's the case, Lieutenant, I wish you all the luck in the world. I hope to see you back in London soon. This rare color footage captured by the Allies shows the early days of the German V-2 rocket program. Capable of hitting targets as far away as London, these so-called vengeance weapons were of great interest to the high command. One can only imagine the devastation if the Nazis had succeeded with the heavy water research and perfected an atomic warhead. Just as the ME-163 had ushered in the jet fighter, the V-2 heralded the beginning of the missile age the implications of which would carry through to all the generations of mankind to follow. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. 